Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Mina Blazy. Today, I want to talk to you about chat GPT or open AI. GPT is the generative pre-trained transformer or how you're talking to an artificial intelligence program. It's hit the world by storm. So back in November, open AI, O-P-E-N AI on the web actually has this interactive platform where you log in, you create a quick account using your Google account or a separate account, and you can ask the platform a question and you can then get output. Now, one of the, it, it has um, um, limitations and I'm gonna give you these limitations. I have them in front of me. It has capabilities and examples of what you can ask it to do. It's artificial intelligence, but one of the limitations is it, um, if you ask it about global warming, it's gonna give you the newest current information that it gathers from the internet. It's limited and it says the limited knowledge of the world and events after 2021. And the reason why, I, and I kind of checked this because I finished my dissertation in 2020 and I decided I was going to ask it a question to see if it could create an article around my dissertation. And it couldn't, it, it wrote an article uh, and it even decided it was gonna put it in a peer reviewed format. It had an introduction. Um, it had information about the analysis, um, limitations and conclusion. But what it did is it found the day, the peer reviewed articles that I used for my research and it took that knowledge and then wrote an article. And that article and the outcomes had nothing to do with my research. Now, there was information that was in my research, but it had nothing to do with the research that I found based on the data analysis that I gathered. So that's kind of an interesting thing. So it's there's limited information. And the reason why I'm talking to you about this is because if you have students or if you are in a business and you wanted to create give you information about, let's for me, it's STEM education. What's the latest in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics according to the United States Department of Education? It actually will go and find the most current research because in December of 2022, there is an, there's information that actually shows um, that the United States government has updated the STEM initiative. So that information is there and it can write an article around it and it's pretty good. But the problem with it is that when you read it, it may not be your voice. So you take that information and you it'll give you a summation, say, can you summarize the STEM Department of Education initiative um, in the United States? That's good information because then you don't have to read the whole thing. But if you're trying to get it to create a paper for you, you need to read it. Because when I read what it created for me, it really, the scope was way off base. So you want to really look at that. So here are some things about at least open AI, open AI. There are apps that are out there that are available that do the same thing. But if you're online, you want to go to open a, like chat.openai.com. And some examples, explain quantum computing in simple terms. Like that would be, that's something it can do quickly for you. It will read it to you, um, and then you can say if it stops you. Like, well, can you can can you add to that? It'll do that. Um, another example is, got any creative ideas for a ten year old birthday? I mean, that's a great question to ask. Now you could Google that and get the same information, but what could you do differently if you could just ask it to do it for you? Now it's there; it's not going away. So being upset at it, mm, that's up to you. But I caution you if you're a student, especially if you're a student and you have access to it, because what will happen is that students will write a paper, a research paper, and then they will cite it. And sometimes the articles don't even exist. Like it'll create an APA uh, citation and that article isn't, doesn't even exist. So you have to teach students what it can do teach students the limitations of it, and then allow the students to maybe take the knowledge and then create their own work. That is where I would caution you with um, when it comes to open AI. Now, there are some other apps. Um, there's ChatGPT um, app. There is an app called Genie. Uh, I recommend that. And then AI Plus, that one's great. That one's my favorite so far when it comes to iOS. And then there's one, it's called AIRT, Art. Air and a T, art. It will create 
a, um, if you give it a phrase, like a five word phrase, say jumping out of a plane and a car at the same time, it'll create artwork that it looks like that. It's kind of in um, a nice square that's the size of maybe um, an Instagram post. And it's nice. If you have this article that you created and you wanted to make it a little bit more creative, you can create artwork around it. It's, I think that's a cool um, AI format for something like GPT. And remember, generative pre-trained transformer. So to generate, to do something, to ask it a question, and then it's pre-trained. Now, remember, the people that are training this, these are people who have, are coding for us. So What's nice about the conversation is, is you can teach students about this and then you can teach them this is why coding is important and your voice is important. So you can put your voice into this. So if somebody gets this information and asks it, give me the lens on African-Americans in um, diversity, equity and inclusion. Give me information on minoritized people. Give me information on how um, people can work together with diversity, inclusion and equity. What if we only had one type of equity or one type of race that was doing that. So that's why we want all of our students to have a voice in maybe the coding perspective and then how they're asking chat GPT or open AI to do this for you. Some capabilities, remember whatever user said earlier in the conversation, it remembers anything that you said earlier in the conversation. So it'll keep it in the feed. And you can say, can you continue with that? Can you elaborate on this word? And then you can say it allows it allows you to follow up corrections like you can say, can you correct this information? Um, and then it's trained to decline inappropriate requests. That's kind of nice. So if it ever is opened up in a school district, maybe as a pilot, at least you can test what you can and can't say to it. I know it's a little scary. A lot of school districts are saying hmm, not yet. Um, but I do think that school districts should be doing research around chat GPT because if I needed a quick speech, it does a great job. And then I can take it, copy it, put it into what I would, uh, I put it into Evernote, read it and say, that's not really my voice, but I like how this was said. And I can tweak it and move it around and offer the speech. Or I can say, find me five articles of the most current research on STEM education around the world. It'll find it for me. OpenAI um, does a good job right now, comparatively speaking, AI plus. I really like that. I, I like that one when it comes to an app. If you go to my LinkedIn, um, Mina J. Blazy, actually Mina Jo Blazy, you will see a few of my articles that I created with ChatGPT. I fully use the ChatGPT AI Plus to create the pros and cons around ChatGPT. That one's really nice. What I'm going to do is in the feed, I'm going to um, give you some articles on artificial intelligence, K-12 curriculum around artificial intelligence and the scope of what the world is saying and the Department of Education when it comes to technology and artificial intelligence and what we can do so that we are training our teachers and then training our families and our students so that um, not just that we can get ahead of it, but just like the cell phone, if we don't train students the, how to use them appropriately, they will use them inappropriately because they're learning with it. But when they, when you learn how to learn um, with what's going on in the world, you can change the dynamics of student learning. So there are pros and cons. Again, I asked it to do some articles for me and they were, it was very good information on STEM education, but it was way off when it came to say my dissertation. So hopefully this is helpful. Again, I'll throw some things into um, the feed, into the chat. Tell me what you're thinking. Tell me what you're doing with chat GPT. Tell me some great ideas that you think you can use and how you can train students to use it appropriately. Um, and then what's your, you know, cons? What, what what do you think are some, you know, things that really won't work for students? And then how can we problem solve to mitigate that? Hopefully that helps. Thank you so much for listening.